Okay, on Cyrus says we've got a very invaluable guest, a young man with a lot of talent, uh, which is good because normally there is no talent on this show whatsoever. Mm-hmm. However, before we get into that, I would even bring him in because he's a dog lover as well. I've got something I want to rant about. Uh, yesterday, I went over to a neighbor's house. I'm outside in the suburbs of Maharashtra somewhere, and uh, they had a very small dog, part mm-hmm. Yorkshire Terrier and part Squirrel or something, really small. And <laughs> while trying to pat him, my lower back went completely. So here's my request: When your dog is so small that he's under knee height, for us dog lovers, can you at least provide a table when we come in, so we can then play with the dog in a nice way, like he's a shepherd or you know a, a Rottweiler or something a little larger, because it's a very small dog can destroy body parts of aging people in seconds. I'm still feeling the pain, but I hope Jehan feels no pain while I introduce him. Jehan, welcome to the show, uh, uh, which is called I've written, I've written it down somewhere. Uh, yeah, Cyrus says, and. Uh, let me first warn you, this is a crap show and I'm so sorry that this is all you could come on today. But I'm sure from here, you can only go up. So look at it that way. <laughs> Everything will be better from, from this point in your life. But let me introduce you. You're an extraordinary talent. Uh, I'm sure you feel a little awkward when I say it, but you are an extraordinary talent. You're a 13-year-old boy who's a master. You can see I'm fidgeting to find the, the research as usual. This is the kind of work we do here. Uh, but you're a, you're a fabulous musician. And that's the main thing that we're going to talk about. But uh, I've also got pictures of you as a very young boy holding up passports and things like that. I can't quite tell because my eyes are bad. Oh, and I think there's a picture of you with Kunal Vijaykar and Rayal Padamsi. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, the passport one was uh, me at the Harry Potter uh, studio, the Warner oh, Brothers. That's studio. right. The Harry yeah. Potter studio. Jan, please interrupt me huh, because I just go and talk like a train uh, whenever you huh? want to. Fear <laughs> nothing. Um, and a Sabira Merchant and Dalip Tahil is quite a nice cast for 1970. Uh, and Farid Karim, yes, all very old, uh, highly uh, disposable. No, I'm kidding. Lovely people. And Ryle and Kunal. Kunal, of course, I can't stand that guy. I don't know why you're next to him. Horrible human being. Uh, but let's quickly talk about the set. That's right. That's right. Right. You should have just told me I have one extra one at home. I would have just given it to you. Um, so. So let's begin at, at, at the point of the music and then we'll go back and see your life. I know you're just 13 years old, but the, it's been a full life already. Um, so we'll start with this video that's out first, okay? Uh, you compose your own, why? Tell us what was the reason to do that? Or was it sheer boredom? Did a girl leave you? Normally, these are the prerequisites for musicians to... So it started like, um, so uh, the CEO and MD of Universal Music India and South Asia, Devraj Sanyal, so he's been sort of mentoring me um, for the past year. And um, he's been encouraging me to write my own songs, compose the tracks and write lyrics and all of that. So what happened was um, we had done a chapter in school about refugees. And I also watched a documentary about refugees, like leaving their families and stuff. And like um, I started writing this song. Um, on the basis of that, it's called Letting You Go. Um, and also I had seen like abroad sometimes, there were these um, teenage girls pushing prams. And like, I was younger then, so I didn't fully understand what that meant. But then as I grew older, I realized that there were quite a few teenage pregnancies. So um, then they were like, I read in articles in newspapers that sometimes they had to give up their children for adoption. And that was really hard for them because they were obviously very attached to their children. So I just started writing that song. Yeah, and then, not to be insensitive, Jehan, but I, I am one of those kids. Uh, I was given up for adoption because I have nothing in common with my parents. So that we, there's no genetic link whatsoever. But uh, what is really interesting here is you said refugees. Are you talking about like the Parsi refugees that you're thinking of who many, many years ago uh, were on their way to Germany, then took a wrong turn and reached Gujarat uh, where there was no alcohol and no meat and uh, three generations suffered and took names like Soli and Pesi, which are banned in public now. Uh, was, it, was, that, was that part of the idea or just ge- refugees in general? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. It, it, it was definitely the past year refugees, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's let's understand. I, but I mean, gen- general refugees were a small subpart. Well, you're fair enough. We are we are refugees in, in some sense. Of course, now it's a bit difficult to cling to that uh, because there are not too many poor Parsis. There are a few, yeah. me included. But coming back to the idea, so you, you just felt a sense of empathy for refugees, for people who were like outcasts, who didn't have a, a place to go to, who had no yeah. belonging to some place. And also... Yeah, and even like they had to leave. They had 
they have to leave their homes, they have to leave their loved ones. And like, okay. for example, even if they didn't know if they'd see them again. Like, for example, putting down a pet because it's really old and, it, and they don't want the pet to suffer. Mm-hmm. So this is all the and different... Like it's, it's a really hard decision. All the different aspects pulled together. I wrote this song when I was 12 and then like, I it's don't know. Of, it's a lot of pain and I suffering. I music too. and stuff. And then like... Yeah, but I'm amazed at, you know, at 12. I'm not saying Sorry? that you can't be sensitive at 12, but there's a lot of pain and suffering in, in this kind of thought process. Uh, empathy levels being great and all that, but just I'm just trying to wonder, was there a personal thing yeah. there of some kind? Is it, I mean, if you don't want to talk about that's fine. I'm just asking. No, no, no. Guys. School puts that through. <laughs> school, but, uh, school puts us through this stuff. <laughs> right. God, don't. We have that in common. Yeah, we, we had read that uh, refugee. We had read that okay, refugee so you... chapter on the Holocaust. So, I mean. Oh, okay. Now, that, that's another world altogether. You're talking about concentration camps and horrible, horrible experiments on human beings, genocide in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty heavy. So, so Jehan, the young Jehan, I'm going to talk to you in third person because uh, I'm setting this up for the other two people listening to the show, my mom and your mom. Uh, so, the young Jehan basically uh, came up with this idea where he, you had a lot of you know, sensitive to the, the whole idea of people being lost and suffering. And in that the gamut of emotions that you've spoken about, whether it's to do with uh, losing a pet or a loved one or whatever, and even teenage pregnancies or people who have to give away. So it's all about loss of some sort, which is quite amazing. Yeah, it, is this it, got anything to do with lockdown also? Well, well, yeah, somewhat. Because, I mean, I started writing all of my like music and lyrics and all during lockdown. So lockdown then, gave you the, yeah, the platform to yeah. go and do this, but the ideas were already there. Yeah, um, and you know, grandparents, you know, like, for example, in this situation, like really old grandparents, they don't know if they'll see their grandchildren again, right? right. Like, because they, we don't know how long this lockdown and coronavirus stuff is going to last. Right. So, it all well, depends. Well, yeah, uh, I've tried to speak to the Maharashtra government to end it by Tuesday of next week, but apparently they are uh, very keen. Um, let's let's go to the Jehan story from the beginning now, and then we'll probably understand everything. Let's know a little bit more about you. So you were a student in a South Bombay school called Cathedral in John Conan, a school I uh, visited uh, frequently in my youth. Uh, first seven standards were great for me. Last three were horrible, but that's my story for another day. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into music and uh, where all this came from. So, well, how I got into music is a little bit of a long story. So, like, when yeah, I was four... I'll, I'll stop the podcast while you're talking. You just keep going. <laughs> sure. Yeah. When I was four, um, my teacher at Campion, I was in Campion before I went to Cathedral in the third. Um, the, yeah. the, 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 the enemy. You went, you went, it's like India-Pakistan. You crossed the border from one to the mm-hmm. other. My God, go on. Yeah. So, um, basically, um, my singing teacher when I was four, he said that um, you should go to this uh, place called the Mali Mehta Music Foundation to sing. Um, and like, it, he said I was very musical. So I had to go to the Mali Mehta Music Foundation where I met, um, yeah. Where Can I, I met- interrupt? So four that you have in common with Mozart, whose first uh, composition is at four <laughs> as well. So there you go. We've got one parallel with one of the greatest, if not the greatest. My dad no, no, no. So, I, the greatest. so I didn't compose anything at the age of four. No. But but your voice, there was a little bit of uh, young Pavarotti in your voice, and he saw it, and <laughs> they sent you to Mehul. Uh, to Mehul, I'm calling him Meli Mehta. I apologize. Mehul is the Gujarati version of the same Parsi gentleman. Um, okay, sorry. Go on. Yeah. So I met um, uh, this incredible teacher. Uh, her name was uh, Rael. Um, Rael, and she was like. Superb. She really, she was really the first one who sort of unlocked this music kind of journey for me. She sort of, well, um, started, so I actually started Mali Mehta in choral, um, with, in like a choir kind of thing where mm-hmm. like all the uh, Sorry, stuff. just uh, the guys listening, it's uh, not choir, it's, they pronounce it wrong. <laughs> it's a choir with a CH. It's like chaos. Uh, but growing up, a lot of people used to say chaos for chaos. Really irritating. CH throws a lot of people, especially the kind of listeners that we have on this podcast, John. Um, right. So it was choral training, which is group singing. 
yeah basically and like little kids they all sat in a circle with the teacher and then we just like sang and then like i started taking a few individual lessons with her to develop my music theory and um that's when i started developing an interest for a piano for the piano and um like my mom was uh, sick from the time i was four and a half so she wasn't able to take me to all these lessons and stuff and um so i wasn't able to play the piano and stuff like and i started the piano finally at the age of 10 which is supposed to be a little late for piano yeah. considering you But, were in at four into the academy of sorts for six years you didn't play the piano no i didn't play the piano i i just sung and like so my grandmother used to take me to class every i think thursday it was every thursday she used to take me to class and then um, finally i stopped going there and then um uh, i started doing the piano and uh, simultaneously um i started going to the sobo house of music um which is uh, yeah and um where i met um it, it's a it's a contemporary uh, music uh, academy you so went to both you went to the meli mehta foundation and you also went to this no so i first went to the meli mehta foundation and then i went to the sobo house of music uh, because i wanted to like a graduation you went from there to there uh, well i'm asking you stupid questions i'm just trying to trace your journey a little bit uh, hopefully young people watching the show will also understand how one becomes a musician if you have talent yeah sorry yeah so basically i went from doing classical music to doing contemporary music damn you jahan how dare you <laughs> you let go of classical music for contemporary forms I that's like go classical music ever that that still stays in the piano only really all right yeah. fair enough uh so yeah. by contemporary what do you mean by contemporary exactly anyway i hope it's not electronic yeah. because that i can't stand no I mean, electronic I music no it, it, it's all type of modern music basically like i start like whichever um, song whichever new songs came out um like so the person who taught me stephen so and um, all the other teachers over there they uh, did those kind of songs with us like no are we looking pop. at folksy songs or pop yeah 60 70s pop. kind of songs or you going into uh, contemporary, no, contemporary music no i think 2016 2017 that thing oh stuff. my god uh, let me check with my daughter maya Ariana Grande is 2016 2017 oh, she is refused to answer <laughs> she's from BIS <laughs> they told not to answer strange men without shirts and correctly <laughs> by the way i apologize for no shirt but you understand it's very hot here and i thought you wouldn't give a damn right if the old man sits around i am wearing a towel so it's not i'm like a shaolin monk <laughs> without the kung fu or you know any philosophy that i can sprout but other than that my my daughter is telling me not to talk it's a podcast and jehan i'm sorry jehan this is a cross conversation going on it should never happen in a professional setup <laughs> she's also 14 you're 13 you know this age is difficult for us parents to deal with you guys yeah not you you've been really nice so far it might change <laughs> all right sorry i uh, interrupted your whole thing about so you moved to sobo and i like an idiot went on about contemporary music which uh, we finally figured out is actually from the last two or three years and not the way i thought um okay yeah. but, uh, my, my point is you no know, we have i think i would say if you don't mind similar backgrounds so i i you know i find it you're raised with one kind of music completely at home and then suddenly you're thrown into i know uh, with the peers and the friends you have modern music to listen to but at least in our households growing up we would only listen to a certain from classical to folk to maybe you know uh, the beatles elvis up to the 70s maybe and after that nothing and that's the way i am i'm very square with music i can't stand anything because of that upbringing so i'm just uh, want you to know if you had a similar upbringing growing up and then suddenly you're thrown into this sobo place and you were thrown people. into it i actually kind of like wanted to do it Oh, because the rebel uh not no because i like classical music i like pop i like rock i like all different types of genres but how is that I like possible music. what are you saying It, yeah because I, i fight with my wife about this all the time jan please advise me because she her whole thing being an artist is that she, she says she shouldn't disrespect food or paintings or music or all that and i'm like you but you have to because if you like something you have to hate something as well like i hate poha i'm going to say it right here i hate poha Okay, I cannot. If if they told me the only way you can stay in India is you eat poha, I'd leave. I just walk off because I just I think you know because if you love say Bhelpuri and you hate poha, that balances out. 
so i don't understand why you have to like all forms of music but no, you, this, so- you know ferry mercury for example who is like till date one of my greatest inspirations and po- probably a grand uncle <laughs> no 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 oh. i mean so but, but coincidentally my grandfather's name is actually farooq so my father's name is farooq how close is that talk about karma <laughs> and he used to play all instruments by the way oh. uh, right now not in very good shape but he did anyway back to you back to you so like ferry he combined all different sorts of music so he actually had a classical foundation and he Correct. did all sorts of new types of music you know yeah, that's fair oh. enough but it didn't go into electronica thank god because i love the queen sound no <laughs> yeah uh, okay i won't bore you to death with, with my picky and choosy of music so you 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 went from the classical training foundation which is great and then you go into this sobo and you experience uh, a more contemporary feel etc yeah. but by now you're playing instruments as well yeah so i uh, started coaching uh, for piano with the legendary professor blossom mendonsa she is like just fabulous i mean she's amazing she really unlocks that whole journey of musical learning for you so we should like, take on a 49 year old middle aged man because i learned the piano when i was young but i've forgotten now i've learned yeah she would she would for sure you know? but my yeah. hands the one my left fingers are longer than my right fingers there was always a bit of an issue yeah so i she you uh, got it <laughs> go on go on go on you should do the right thing three huh. years i went from being like a ta 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 to being like a grade eight So okay, I mean, now, Jahan, you lost me. What is it? Ten, 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 ten. Ten, 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 ten. Playing one note with one finger. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. And like I then then say it playing complex. Ten, 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 ten. Everybody watching the program, try it at home. Ten, 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 ten. Okay. So you, what you're saying is you weren't that fluid, and then because of Blossom, you started playing like Horowitz overnight. Uh, well, not no. I mean, I would say I'm well. Papa, don't be modest <laughs> here because you're you're obviously a very talented boy. That's fine. You don't have to agree with it. I won't even make you talk about it. Let's just move on from there. So she started teaching you everything, and so. But how old were you? At still ten, right? Yeah, I was. I was still ten. And then, um, what happened was at at the age of eleven, um, Stephen Sir, who was at the Soho House of Music, he said that I should apply to uh, the Juilliard Summer School. So the Julia summer program. So we applied, and um, I went in July, um, twenty nineteen. Yeah, I went in July twenty nineteen to uh, the Julia summer program. Wow, that was really a blast because it was kind of like meeting people who really understood stuff about music, like and the way I felt, like because we all felt the same way. So I was like, I was a music major and. Um, I was a singing major and a music minor. So um in singing we had choral recitation. Um so and um the choral recitation teacher she was just fabulous. She was so fun and energetic and she just knew how to get us into the music. And um wow. in music this, minor, sorry Jan you're, you're only 12 at this point. Huh? I'm 11 actually. 11 okay. 11 you're in Juilliard you're actually working with probably the best teachers in the business yeah. um especially for a modern career i would think and you also you're specializing in singing choral well singing in general and you're still yeah. getting an instrumental degree as well of sorts oh. yeah even choral as well but like singing as well so and then in music minor um we basically had to form a band out of a few people uh, so there were like around like say 30 to 35 people in that group and um Our age group? Are they all uh, young or mixed up? No, no. So uh, mixed up from uh, ranging from like eleven to eighteen years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, actually, not not even eleven, nine to eighteen years old. There were some people younger than me over there. So that was like really interesting. There's a bit of a growing up, a growing up experience for you, not just from an arts point of view and your your profession you know sort of uh, honing your your skills but also dealing with foreigners different people new culture new environment were you alone no i mean like my parents were there for julia they they came right. but um i had a full year at julia and then i came back home in the evening 
and it was in Geneva. So I was like, yeah. Can I just segue there for a second? I've been to Switzerland. My wife, who wears the pants in our relationship, oh, shirt as well, um, she drove us all across Switzerland. And I, I, though I like Switzerland, I couldn't stand the food. I found the food was very one-dimensional. I wasn't able to get, I really suffered. I they really eat a lot of horse. It scared I the hell out of me. I absolutely love the food. Like every morning, I used to go to the Are shop. you breaking my heart? Oh. I used to go to the train station and there was this little shop over there and they had freshly made mini pizzas. So I used to have that for breakfast every day. And then I used to have these heavenly vanilla cruffins. Not, not, well, that's what they call in India. Right? They're, they're custard kind of cakes. They're filled with like vanilla, creamy custard in the middle. And it's super sweet. And um, basically you just like begin. And so what I did was I, I basically had all the custard first and then I, and then I had the bread alone. <laughs> wow. That sounds much better than my experience in Switzerland, where I could, there were just five things on the menu. In fact, in Montreux, if I remember correctly, has that famous uh, Freddie Mercury statue. Yeah, it's yeah. frequent there. You, did you see that? No, I, I wasn't in Montreux. You didn't leave Geneva. Okay. You, didn't, you didn't leave Geneva. All right, uh, let's get back to the story. So then you um, you got, what was this, three months? Three months in the academy? No, no, no. It was, it was actually two weeks. So oh, two, two weeks, weeks okay. in uh, Juilliard. And then it was quite intensive, actually. But it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, and then I came back and then what happened was I did my first ever uh, recording of a cover of Queen, my Melancholy Blues. Um, and, let, me, um, let me check with my critic. Queen's my Melancholy Blues. Play, play. I'm, I'm organizing it as we speak. Go on, sorry. And this was where? This was, uh, this was back in India, in Mumbai. No, but, but where did you perform? I didn't perform. It was in a studio. Oh, it was just like, recorded. It was, it was a live recording in a studio. Okay. One right. single take. So yeah. Wow. One single take. Yeah, I did it in one take. By choice? So it was like By some choice. reason for that. By choice. Excellent. No, no, no. no. Again, Mozart. No, uh, okay. also told me to do it. That's another Mozart. Uh, I don't know if you can hear my my quartet barking in the background. This is music to only my ears. But uh, that's also Mozart's moment because he never rewrote. So it's, it's similar to doing a single take. It's just he wrote in one streams of consciousness, one shot. I'm a big fan of all that. I love artists who do that without looking, you know, checking things. Apparently Shakespeare was the same. You can never really prove it. There's no rewriting. It's always, you know, the performance is once. With or without mistakes, it's just once. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I like that. So that we've got two. Uh, wow, that's, that's this huge burden so then, in, in a sense. That Queen cover, uh, so miraculously, somehow, I still date, don't know how, uh, but Queen picked up that video. Yeah. And they posted it on their YouTube uh, like videos page and uh, on their Facebook. So, and it just, and that's how this all started, kind of. Because that's from so there, Devrat Sanyal picked me up and then he right. started mentoring me and then I started writing songs and then I wrote this song and then... Before we get to Devraj, let's just talk about Queen for a second. That's you, you, Look at this. This is just an amazing, I won't say coincidence, but it's almost like karma. So they had a Parsi boy who was the front man who made them one of the greatest bands that ever lived. And then somewhere later, you know, way later after the, you know, they're a legendary band, of course, but they don't really perform. Um, and then another Parsi boy turns up thanks to the internet and boom. And mm -hmm. maybe you look like a, a young Freddie. Let me see your teeth, Chian. No, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. Come on. <laughs> Listen, if all the people remember Freddie Mercury's lovely front teeth, let me tell you that they've not understood the value of the man. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, no, so, I mean, this is tickling, it should have tickled you pink. Queen. Yeah, I was super happy, but I was also like, what's going on kind of thing. <laughs> wow, that's, that's just fantastic. Obviously, Uh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anyone. Yeah, Cyrus, I can't uh, hear you. Now I can hear you. <clears throat> no, that's me, Jahan. Uh, can you hear Cyrus? Yeah. I can't hear Cyrus. No, his voice is gone. Hello? I can hear like small, small echoes, Cyrus. Can you yeah. just talk again? 
Okay, no worries, no worries. Still can't hear anything. No. Nothing can't hear, can't hear. Yeah. You, your microphone volume may be a little low. Um, I think it just somehow got disconnected yeah. because it won't, the volume won't decrease randomly, right? Yeah, it shouldn't. Yeah. It still shows that his audio is on, though. Yeah, it does. That's a weird. It's on. Okay, now I think. Now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can hear you. Oh, back. Yeah, back. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jehan. No, I have no, no idea what's happening. I pay my taxes. This is not my responsibility. I've done everything correctly except wear a shirt. I even <laughs> voted for a government which has not been formed in the last 10 years. Um, <laughs> let's get back. So, we're talking about Queen. I mean, that's a real pat on the back, you know, when something. I mean, who? who? That's a story that happens to very few people. One of the greatest bands gets into you and then, you know, you're on another level after that. So, one, Tickle Pink. Two, what are your favorite Queen songs? Oh, God. Um, favorites? I, oh, you mean well, Rhapsody? I'm Melancholy Blues, for sure. Yeah, I definitely like that. Um, they keep changing from time to time. So, I, I think Bohemian Rhapsody, yes. Um, I like... Um, we are the champions. I like the other one. Girls? Uh, well, you know. No need to smile, young man. Just a nice song. <laughs> yeah. it's, okay. it's okay. You don't have to like it. What about those were the days of my life? Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful song. Yeah. All right. Um, before we go into a break, I just want to talk about Devrat Sanyal. Who do you know? He was with Brahma, and he was a rock musician, and yeah, yeah, his yeah. background because he's from my generation growing up. Uh, in fact, they had a Parsi drummer with the same name, Cyrus, if I remember correctly, in the band. Yeah. Uh, so they were quite the rage for a little while, and then this music, I think, indie pop took over, and you know, the, the rocking, the more like rock heavy metal sort of band. That yeah. sort of went into the background but the you know I don't know I can't remember the whole thing but Devraj was very much a front he was a he was one of those Iron Maiden sort of performers who comes and sings with, I, I have strong memories of Devraj uh, Sanyal so yeah now tell us about his relationship with you so um, after uh, Preen posted me um, he, he sort of picked me up and um, he sort of like just got to know us a little bit and then he started mentoring us he started mentoring me. Sorry, I mean, he got to know us and then he started mentoring me. I don't blame you. That's uh, the fault of Ornab Goswami, who speaks in third person and fourth person. So when you start saying us and all, it's normal. A whole generation is weaned on that guy and it's fairly uh, acceptable. Do not worry. Uh, so he, he again, this is a, all these are coincidences. Uh, that you, you had no influence yeah. or friendships with anybody. Um, Queen out of nowhere, just through the internet. Uh, Devraj out of nowhere, just got to know because a buzz happened, obviously. So the little yeah. buzz happened in the music world and boom. So he picked it up. And then he said, wow, this kid's got talent and he descended on you. Uh, well, yeah. So, yeah. Horrible phrase to use. I apologize. I pulled that back. What I mean is he, he saw you and said, okay, this guy's got something. This kid's got something. Uh, yeah. And then but then when started, the complete... He started pushing uh, me. Sorry. Yeah. So when did the composing bug happen? So, so far we've seen that you're, you know, you're learning your craft, you're learning your art rather. And uh, the composing bug, the, uh, the bug, how does that start? So that sort of starts like just a month or two before lockdown. And then once lockdown starts and I get a little bit more free time, it, it, stop, it sort of starts to kick in. Because I, I had anyway been just playing rubbish on the piano. So I kept playing rubbish on the piano and one day decided I'll write like words to that rubbish and that. So I mean, I, and then, and then all road. gradually, like I started to learn music production as well. Like side by side with online school. So it was, yeah, it was quite a lot of fun. There was no pressure on yourself. You just were experimenting and seeing what happened. 
Yeah. Then, but then suddenly getting this sense of sensitivity towards the world and this sense of loss. Again, I don't want to invade your private space. And, and then writing a really heavy sort of a song, which, uh, you know, for a 13-year-old sounds... Yeah. Um, I, I think... Yeah, I think we sort of all suffer from uh, separation anxiety to some extent. I mean, I know I do because my mom was sick, right? And uh, and like sometimes I woke up in the night like not knowing where she was and like because she was hospitalized and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, it was a little scary. But then as I became older, uh, we also figured out what the problem was. And then she started getting much better. She is much better touch wood today. And well... Yeah. So wow, separation anxiety. He's thirteen. Amazing. I, I let me tell you, it gets worse. At thirteen, you're feeling a more perhaps realistic sense of it. By forty-nine, you'll feel what I feel, which is if they take away my drawers or my favorite underwear, <laughs> I, I feel upset. You know, because you get you know close to things and stuff. Yeah. Uh, before we go into the break, uh, this is a slightly personal conversation, which I hope you don't mind. You're fourteen. You're Parsi. Uh, the the race is dying and dwindling. My daughter's had her Navjo. She's uh, no, you're 13, she's 14, but that's not a big deal. Uh, non vegetarian household. Uh, how do I take this further, Jehan? Um, well, you, I don't. <laughs> oh, awkward moment number 68. Let's just enjoy it. <laughs> I don't think my daughter could hear, so don't worry, you're fine. You're off the hook. Uh, all right, great. So this is the setup. Uh, are you are you going to sing at all? Uh, well, you? if you sort of like me to, I, I mean, I can play my song for you if you like. Can you play it and then we'll take a small break and bring Silvery in with the AMAs. Sure, so I can, this I can is share the screen. You're going to share the screen? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do an Australian version of an announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jehan live in concert from uh, Napkin Sea Road, Mumbai. Where is it exactly? Oh, it's in Cuff Parade. Cuff Parade, Mumbai, just off the Sea Road. Jahan in concert. <laughs> just ignore me. You'll, you'll have worse announcers <laughs> on your journey forward. Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah, I shall just. Do you want to, uh, me to share the video with you? Well, it's just you live with the video. We can play anyway. Just a bit. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, perfectly well. Woke up in the morning to find all my dreams crumbling. I tried to get out of my bed, but I seem to be made of lead. I was scared. You're on mute. Yeah. So yeah, that was wow. a little bit of sentiment. Yeah, that's a lovely taste. And we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back. Just before we take the break, so this arrangement is also you? Sorry? The music, arra the music arrangement is also by you? Um. So I sort of made a basic track and then it went for production in the US where the producer sort of fleshed it out and added all those cool sound effects and stuff. And Okay. Oh, that's the modern world. Fair enough. But the first draft is you, and then they've uh, put the bells and whistles the way they wanted to. We'll take a quick I, break. We I, have. I, I wrote, break. composed, and uh, sung it. Wrote, composed, sung, and also put it together, and then they've added a little bit to it. But it's it's great. More. Don't worry. We can be a little creative with, uh, with what we're saying. Uh, Jihan is with us. He's a prodigy. He's a musical talent, which you're going to hear lots from. He's been picked up by Queen, the surviving members, of course, uh, who are, what is the word that you say, uh, uptowed in Gujarati by his performance. And uh, he's going to talk to us about life in school at the age of 13 as well when we come back. We'll be joined by Silvery after the break. Yeah. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, you can. We're back after the break. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Please do. Go after the break. No, no, we're on. We're on. Go on. I'm just waiting for Silvery to join us, but you can talk. No, no, it's coming. Say, say, Jehan, you were saying something. Please, this is your show. You say whatever you want. You can use bad language also. Just tell mom to look away. 
It's fine. It's fine. No, no, please, please say you were saying something. I interrupted you. I keep interrupting you. Please say. No, oh, so I, mean, I, I just want to say like I'm super grateful like to God for all these opportunities, and like I don't know how they came, and I mean I'm I'm just like so grateful, and because I never like imagined that this would like actually happen. And I mean, I'm so grateful. Well, as far as I know, God doesn't listen to the podcast. Uh, there's no feedback <laughs> we're getting from there. But I have to tell you that I did make a call to Queen, and I did call Devraj, who's an old friend of mine. And so I don't want to take any credit, but I, I've done my bit, Jehan. I can't do any more now. <laughs> I'll just sit back and enjoy the Jehan effect as you grow from strength to strength. In the meantime, we have Silvery, yeah. who cannot play a single instrument except his organ, which uh, I've tried over my life to play multiple, though. You have? Yeah, yeah. I've tried you, the guitar actually... for two months. I have tried. Uh, I have a saxophone. Don't do any YouTube videos. Don't do. No, no, no. no. Did you get it? I took Wait, classes uh, for a two months. <laughs> two months, yes. Uh, why do you stop? Man, I uh, lazy. I guess <laughs> just I don't know what to say. I also tried to uh, try to learn the saxophone uh, for about two weeks, uh, which also did oh. not uh, pan out well. <laughs> for a guy who couldn't master the guitar, you went straight for the sax, which is uh, hey, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jian, is there something in that that? I mean, you just have to be. I guess within a few days, or maybe in the first touch, a guy knows whether he's musical or not. Oh uh, well, I don't. I, I honestly don't know. But I mean, I guess you have to just like keep trying. Stick with it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. but that that wasn't Silvery. Sorry, is not yours. The moment you you know, the moment you got close to a piano, you knew you could sort of play it and whatever. No, well, not really. I mean, I had to keep learning. So as I kept learning, I could keep playing. I mean, yeah, but it your became passion easier. Must be much deeper as well. I think he just wanted to become a rock star and have the groupies and the ladies shouting no. his name. And unfortunately, Always. of course, yeah. Sorry. I mean, oh, like no, I... Jehan, I'm talking about Silvery. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, no, he won't insult you, sir, Jehan. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not on the program, Baba. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jehan, are you cool? Are, are you good to go with the AMAs? Yeah. Yeah. This is the Ask Me Anything section. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, some fun AMAs. Uh, Varun Sandeshi asks, "Hey, Sayas and guest, uh, guys, I've always oh this is uh, related to what we were just talking about. Guys, I've always wanted to learn a musical instrument, but I always find it difficult to stick to it. Have you ever learned an instrument, Sayas? And which instrument do you think is the easiest to learn and pick up, to pick up and learn? So we were, we were made to play the recorder when I was six years old. I'm trying to remember the whole sequence of my my aunt Roshan used to." Uh, teach piano right till uh, three four years back when she's basically uh, wheelchair bound but um, so we learned the piano i could play uh, number 21 that was my favorite i could play that uh, a full you know bar of that as well and with both hands by the way jihan <laughs> oh, I, i don't know if you learned the same things you know so all that you know bring to me only with thine eyes i could play that as well which is quite a complicated uh, but now then we stopped and started swimming and crap like that and now i can't play anything i tried i remember doing a play called godspell and there was a piano after a long time there while we were rehearsing so i thought maybe it'll come back but people would beg me to shut up it was really painful <laughs> Silvery, you and me. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> we are the failed uh, musicians here. Yeah, we are the alternate Beatles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really. Uh, Jahan, what about you? Yeah, would you like to uh, answer it? Is there an instrument, Jahan, you think which is uh, slightly more easier to pick up than other instruments, maybe? Or a starting instrument, perhaps? Yeah. Well, I guess the guitar may be a little bit easier to pick up. Oh, what a slap on Silvery's face! Ouch. Well, I can't even do the easy things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they gave you the simplest yeah, one <laughs> but also i think for a guy or young uh, male uh, not to be sexist but you know the idea of having a guitar with the whole image thing and all maybe that yeah. also helps young guys get into it i don't know <laughs> maybe I, that's I why it's easier it's, it's it's easier to get a women after a guitar no oh, right really yeah. he's, he's only 13 i don't know maybe maybe easy you know jump maybe easy you know as well but But Jan, don't you see guys in your class and all growing up? At least at more in college, maybe for me, uh, playing air guitar who can't play a note. 
But you know, when it's yeah, music yeah. playing in the background, they'll be like, Arr, Arr, and you know, they're not they're not playing any chords or anything. The left hand is just you know in the air pulling a light bulb, and the right hand is doing its own thing. Uh, I find, that, and then I ask them, some, "Hey, you can play guitar?" Because some of them put a really good show on, you know, yeah. of air guitar and all that. And then you like, no, no idea, no, never held a guitar in my life, just <laughs> feeling it. There are people who are proud of their air right. guitaring skills. Like, man, I air guitar yeah. the best, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, dude, it's anyone can do it. <laughs> it's not a skill. No, no, but Silvery, uh, he hasn't started drinking yet. He's still only 13. Yeah. Give him a two, whatever, five years, or whenever that starts, he'll be around guys who, after two or three drinks, start thinking they actually are with Air Supply or you know, cool, Iron yeah. Maiden or whatever the hell groups of today whose names I don't know. I love those guys. As they get more drunk, they would just start playing their hearts out. And it's all, I mean, the guitar is this small. It's like here somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. So much fun. Oh, Jian, lots of good okay. stuff coming up in your life, mate. Just keep that phone recorder on, huh? Oh. <laughs> okay. Then, next? Next one, next one comes in from Ashish Jadwani. He says, uh, hi, Silas and guest again. A big fan of the show. Silas, if you had to interview one and only one member of the Beatles, who would it be and why? Very hard, but I would always go for John Lennon. Uh, mm. for many, many reasons. I won't bore everybody. But I just think John was evolving all the time. And... I love Paul McCartney also and George and Ringo, but all said and done, I, I felt John would keep changing and was changing when he was shot as well at just the age of 40. So who knows were you a fan? Behind. Were you ever a fan of their individual music also, like the independent music? The so John's drama? individual music, definitely. Uh, yeah. Just like starting over, Jealous Guy, those guys. Paul, um, not so much, but obviously as the Beatles, uh, un, uh, no question. Uh, Jihan, in my way, I grow up, uh, if you ever insult the greatest group of all time, we get violent. So you cannot say any anti beatle things on this podcast, please. All right? Uh, are you Joker, a fan of the Beatles? Huh? Me a... uh, well, yeah. So. Okay, fair enough. That's under okay. pressure. <laughs> to, quote, to quote Queen, <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one comes in from. Wait, wait, let, let, let him answer. Yes, please. Yeah. Who, who, if not the Beatles, who's the one musician that you would interview? I mean, would it be Freddie? Well. Like, you have a choice of anyone, living or dead. Who would you choose? That's a tough question, I know, but whatever comes to mind. Living or dead? Yeah, living or dead. John is dead, for example. (laughs) Some of the best interviews are with dead people. Well, I think dead would be, um, dead would be John Lennon, probably. Not Freddie. Well, Freddie as well, but you said from the Beatles. Okay, I'll go outside the Beatles for you. Because I, oh, okay, that was Sherry. Sherry, no Sherry. contact. Sherry. And no classical musician? Well, no. <laughs> no. I mean, as much as I love to play classical music, I I wouldn't fancy interviewing one of those classical musicians. But your German isn't that good or Italian. So no, more. they were often said to be a little mad in that place. <laughs> so Mozart definitely was. Absolutely. So you didn't eat in, in public and things. Like it was a crazy guy. Complete artist. <laughs> Uh, Beethoven was deaf by the time you interview him, so it'll be fine. <laughs> Handel Hayden, I can't remember too much. Schubert, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky didn't like the ladies, so that would be a problem. Uh, let's move on. Next question. Okay. Uh, next one comes in from Nikita, Nikita Mahajan. She says, uh, hi, Silas and guest. I just gave my 12th boards and I'm still not sure of what to do next. How do I know whether whatever I choose now will still interest me in the next five or say 10 years down the line? Personally, I love the phrase I just gave. It's only in India that we say it. I just gave my exams. I just, you know, I don't know whether it translates from Hindi better. Many exam dia. Well, how do you say it, Maya? Since you passed, she won't answer. Jihan, what do you mean? It should be I wrote my exams or uh... I, I did my exams. I passed my exams. I finished my exams. I don't know, but we say th- all of us say this. I gave, and this okay. it's it's an Indian thing. It, okay. You won't hear it anywhere in the English speaking world outside here. But here it's normal. In fact, lots of people will say it. Uh, Jehan, how would you, what would you say? In English or in Hindi? Because in Hindi, I can't speak Hindi. Well at all. That won't change. Generations later, Silvery, the Parsis have destroyed the Hindi language. I guess I'd say I just finished my exams. All right, but now I forgot the question because the our question petty was, minds got into that first line and now I can't remember. Uh, the question was, I just gave my 12th boards and I'm still not sure of what to do next. How do I know of whatever, uh, whether whatever I choose now will still interest me Five or say ten years down the line. God, this is a fabulous question and so difficult to answer. Yeah, Jahan is 
veteran here. Let him take it first. Uh, but do you guys know? I mean, you're even younger than Nikita, but do you have any idea? If in your case, music is a very strong part. So one is thinking that will be your profession. But in most cases, when you finish 12, you don't really know what you want to do. Or even if yeah. you do, it may change. Yeah, that's true. It may change. What does Jehan want to do? Is it music, music, uh, music, or is there another? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, I don't know. I guess, I guess I want to become like an artist, like singing stuff. And... So there's no question of any fallback plan, like medicine. I mean, of course there is. I love, I love science, and um, and maths. It's they're my favorite subjects. Wow. So he's already good at stub- studies and he's artistic. What a waste, no? You have so much. He said he likes I them. Think... He didn't say he was good. No, he's Just good at them. All, in all fairness. No, nobody likes physics, bro. Okay, you gotta be good at I physics. Said, you can't I say I, I really I like, like looking at a like physics. physics you know, a refraction like is my physics. favorite thing in the whole world. I hope that's physics. I can't remember. He's saying he likes physics. I love maths. And I I love chemistry. I like physics. I like bio. Oh wow! That's wow. Cool. Well, I hope you find the right girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, he's you, got his music. Uh, Girls will never get bored. Ja- yeah. Jahan, would you would you try for like uh, some colleges like Juilliard or something like that? Because he's you already are super talented. He's yeah. already done that summer course, so he probably it would be some brownie points, I presume. Yeah, yeah, probably, but that's classical. Okay, so that's I, classical. I'm, I'm moving towards rock and pop and contemporary music. Ah, okay. What about Purdue and so, so so no no university abroad teaches you non or rather the whole Berkeley gamut does. holistic Berkeley does. huh Berkeley does Berkeley Berkeley correct Berkeley yeah so uh, but this what is the one you mentioned Sobo the Sobo um, Sobo House is doing it's basically like uh, they they train you for singing basically it's not like a proper like school or stuff but um. They send you for exams and stuff, and they're really good. I mean, my vocal cords like are changing now because like I'm. Um, Did you hit the high that. C? Um, I, I think I can if I like scream wow. a little bit. Oof! At thirteen, we hit the high C. There's no no looking back. Yeah, I can <laughs> hit the high C, but uh, someone has to hold uh, body parts. <laughs> <laughs> So when my voice started changing, like I thought I wouldn't be able to sing, but then um, Devraj uh, he sent me uh, to this amazing vocal co- coach called uh, Samantha Noella at the Scatitude Academy of Music, and she's just like top notch. I mean, she really, she can really, she understands how your vocal cords work, and she can really train them to work in whichever situation. Like right now, my voice is going through that like. Super irritating phase where like it, sometimes I just like. But it hasn't cracked. Has it cracked? It has. It has. It started. It, it started cracking actually around a year ago. Oh, okay. So it's become going to be more more male sounding now in the next year or two. <laughs> yeah. So probably you're going to get a deeper timber to his voice. It all change. Yeah. I of course my voice never cracked. I still sound like an eight year old girl. <laughs> This is good on the phone because people who are lonely then they have someone to talk to is interesting. <laughs> oh. Let's get let's get back to the question. Sorry, Silvery. Yeah, the question was, uh, uh, how do you know what? No, no, wait. Yeah, how do you know what whether you, something you choose will be something you are interested in the next five ten years? No. Yeah, but you can't answer that. Even he can't, can't answer yeah. that. And his path to music is very clear. But yeah. what is Jian? Can you answer that? How can you answer what you'll do at nineteen? Things may change in your life, and suddenly you may say, "I want to become a weightlifter." You know. I have, <laughs> I have no idea. I think. Yeah, I think. I think what you can do is choose a more generic course than a more specializing specialization course. Yeah. And uh, then because most people like ninety percent of people, okay, maybe eighty percent of people end up doing something completely different anyway from what they studied. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like Vineet who we spoke to, uh, yeah. the entrepreneur, the left brain, right brain thing. Now, he, Jehan is a classic case of that. He's got the very creative brain and he's got the very scientific brain, which yeah. tells you all the little bit. You're left-handed, but but I'm, we've been told oh, wow. that you're either one or the other. Like they would say in my case that you know he's not good for academics and but he's little creative, so whatever. So I think that's a wrong notion. A lot of people are mixed. Like he yeah, really is because, mixed, actually. Yeah, it doesn't depend on which side of your brain like functions more or whatever. 
Yeah, but, in, in, but in your case, I'm saying there's a good chance that you're really good at science also because you're passionate about the sciences at this young age. Plus, he's obviously excellent at music. So, um, j- just with the Vineet case, which is similar, you know, in, in the sense that these guys and there are plenty out there who have that option of both. So, the education curriculum should allow you, like you said, Sylvie, to be flexible. We need to, since True. our podcast is award-winning and makes differences in society as we speak, we must get somebody from the educational board on. Because yeah. I don't know, in America, yeah. you have that option. So he could literally study music along with a business degree. It's possible. But he probably won't be able to do that here as far yeah, as I think. There kind of are universities that do give dual degrees. So yeah. I think you have dual degrees. Like um, Europe and uh, in the US. Like yes. Down University, for example, they give dual degrees. There you go. Which is good in a way because also you get away from one side and go to the other side. Which I think is also therapeutic for people like yourself who have this dual mind. As against uh, some people, we, we, we can't escape. Some of us can't escape because that's all we can do. Sometimes I just think it's a little boring to just do the same thing again and again. It's like marriage. You know, you can't change your wife every weekend. I've tried. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just giving him good advice from a <laughs> middle-aged perspective. And Jahan is just going to tell his mother never again <laughs> after the podcast. Can we squeeze in one more? I want to ask him one yep. question about dogs. Can I do that? Yep, sure. I, yeah, sure. Yeah, please go ahead. So, uh, I was going to the. I've been in touch with your mom, Jehan, and uh, you're a huge dog lover. I'm always pushing the animal uh, agenda. Uh, but unfortunately, because of her illness or something, is it an uh, allergy or what? She's not very um, comfortable no, having a dog. She's dizzy and she, has, uh, she actually has chronic migraines and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's a brain inflammatory disease. So, can so, I recommend? Can I recommend, yeah. because uh, I don't know health, but I do know canines to some degree. Do not get a Dachshund or a Yorkshire Terrier who's very small, especially with someone who's feeling dizzy because you'll trip over the dog. You need to get yourself a GSD or an Indy of a certain yeah. size. Okay, they're super intelligent. You don't have to do anything with a GSD. <laughs> GSD is like a seven-year-old child. You don't have to go through the diapers and the uh, feeding and the nursing and all that, and the puking and crapping all over the place that rubbish things kids do and get away with it all the time. And uh, stupid people say, how cute. Which I found really disgusting. Imagine if you were there at six or seven. That was your first week on Earth. So that's what the GST gives you. He's so sharp. And uh, honestly, I'm seriously telling you, yeah. uh, since you both your mom and you love dogs, I think you really should keep a dog. It keeps the family together. Yeah, my dad also loves dogs. Then, then go for it. GSD, GSD. Shall I find you a rescue dog? We we try to find rescue Indies, rescue GSDs. We'll help you. Well, maybe in a year or two. Okay. <laughs> Not taking my offer. I'm most hurt. My sweat is pouring <laughs> from my armpits as we speak. Yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready. But believe me, you won't regret it. I know mom has issues and concerns about her health, but trust me, you won't regret it. And I don't know what will happen. You'll disappear uh, probably with your talent to some other country and study further in three or four or five years. And uh, mom and dad will have that dog, which will keep everybody together. Just think about that. And remember, dogs are allowed in Dungarwadis. They're allowed in Agyaris. They're allowed, they're the only, uh, you know, non parsis aren't allowed. They have had fights with photographers and all that. I told you this story, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did one uh, thing on uh, New Year, Navroz, and we shot inside the Godris Bagh Agyari. And uh, the poor, I think he was a Maharashtrian photographer, and he was trying to get in to shoot better because we, he wanted that opening. It's very grand, you know, the Agyari from the front. Yeah. But he wanted us to go deep so he could, whatever. And he came in. He stepped in, and the Dasuji screamed at him. Oh, what are you doing? You're not Parsi. Oh, get out, get out. And then, fellow, what do you mean? I'm not partial. Don't you go, get out, get out. And then, then they said, but you have a dog, there's a dog in there. Hey, doggy is Parsi. You're not Parsi. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, wow. that's that's all I wanted to say. I don't, I'm not going to force you, Jenny. Your mom will call and scream at me later. I don't want that. But uh, can we squeeze in one more? Yes, sure. Uh, this last one comes in from Girish Thapar. Uh, he says, yeah, he says, what is the craziest professional dream you've ever wanted to achieve? Uh, and do you think you would reach that in your life? Jehan, have you had a crazy professional dream? Yeah, that, 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 like, that. You like to be in a rock concert or in a musical or people screaming your name. Uh, I, think, I think all of us do that at some point. Not just screaming your name, Dad. That, that's just a bit too much, I feel. <laughs> well, well, that comes with the territory, John. If you're famous, they're going to scream your name. And luckily, it's two syllables. 
not like bloody antariksh oh god that would take half an hour you were a rock star <laughs> imagine the western tongue tripping on your name i love him i love antar what what's his name i don't know his name but i love him <laughs> yeah. so we gave you silvery your rechristening of silvery will make you a household oh name we become really yeah. big as a comedian you can, can you imagine they all recall you fast otherwise kunal kamran also would take hours to get to So Silvery, that's my gift to you. Jihan, I have no gifts for you. You you could give gifts to me, from what I gather. But as we say, bye to you. Is there anything else you want to say about school? Uh, because I hate school, and I think there's just too much regimen there. And we should we should stop it as a concept. Now, of course, uh, you're going live. Are you, uh, your mom said you're going back to school in a in a week or so. No, no, no. Or is that on online? No, that that's online. Okay. That's online. Okay. All right. I, I really miss school. I honestly because I miss being in physical school. I miss I, my friends. I, I, I miss running through the corridors and running down the stairs and heaving as I climb three floors up with a heavy bag. Hey, in the middle school, I peed in the girls' toilet. Oh, what? <laughs> you must do things like that. That's the only way you feel good about yourself when you're in your forties <laughs> that you did silly things. Yeah. So remember we did it we did it in working hours also proper working hours and i think there was a girl inside the toilet but she didn't say anything <laughs> two of us went in oh what fun jian things to do huh? put it on your list huh? win grammy award <laughs> work in oscar winning film and be in toilet for females don't forget <laughs> yeah all right this has been great jahan uh, thank you so much for being on the show let's uh, keep in touch if you don't mind as you become a big star don't uh, ignore us Uh, no, of course not. Ours is a small I mean, platform, but you. I don't think I'm going to be a big star. So I mean, it's not in your hands. Look at your life. Your I life won't is just taking too much. No, you. But you listen. Somebody saw you on the internet. Next thing you know, Queen gets in touch with you. Uh, Devraj gets in touch with you. Uh, this is a bit of a low for you coming on the podcast. But other than that, it's all been high, high, high. <laughs> no, so no. I think. I I think your your life is taking its own course. This is a big question in Shakespeare as well. I'm sure you'll study it at some point if you haven't already. Is man, uh, um, you know, in control of his own destiny, or is destiny in control of man? I think it's uh, Brutus and Cassius in the same play give you both options. Uh, is the stars the stars above that govern us, or uh, what is the other line? Uh, I can't remember. What you said? Yes. <laughs> so the, here's the question: What do you think, destiny or or yourself? I think it's both. is young ah his youth is wasted on the youth as oscar wilde said all right <laughs> cheers jahan you've been wonderful i'm sorry if i pulled your leg and spoke too much thank you so much i'm so much fun on this podcast don't be silly your credit to not just the uh, parsi community but to india and to music and i hope you do really well i'm sure you will and and silvery i have nothing nice to say to you hey that's fine i'm used to it <laughs> okay bye guys <laughs> see you <laughs> see you sorry see you jahan Thank you. 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 Thank you.